car makers from the US, UK, Germany, Korea and Japan broadly follow a similar playbook when it comes to designing their cars. And then there's the French who are kind of out there doing their own thing. And that leads us to the Citroen C4. This third generation of the C4 has seen it transform from small car to subcompact crossover SUV, which gives it some pretty stiff competition from the likes of the Honda HRV, the Toyota CHR, and the Mazda CX-30. But do its quirks make a good argument for it? Well, I'm not so sure. The overall design has obviously been somewhat influenced by the Toyota CHR, but that's no bad thing because it's a good looking car. At the front here, we've got these LED light clusters that go off at all sorts of interesting angles. It actually reminds me a little bit of the Kia Sportage. Side on, and you can see this car's low sloping roof line really does give it a coupe shape with this nice bit of black glass here meeting up with the C pillar. The wheels are 18 inches. I'm not sure if the black grey colour really lets them look their best. One interesting little design quirk though is just this little bit here, which from afar looks like a step to get into the car, but you really don't need a step to get in this car. It's not that big. Closer inspection reveals it's just a bit of plastic. The rear end of the C4 matches the front, so we've got LEDs again going off at interesting angles. It does look a little bit busy, but it looks okay. The spoiler here sort of sits three quarters of the way down the rear windshield. It's a nice little sporty touch underneath the boot lid. We've got a 380 litre storage space, which you can expand by a further 900 litres with the 60-40 rear split seats folded down. Under the bonnet we find a sprightly 1.2 litre three-cylinder turbocharged engine that outputs 114 kilowatts of power, which is pretty good, and 240 newton metres of torque. Now despite being a petrol engine, it does make a little bit of a diesel-esque kind of noise and can actually idle a little bit roughly. The interior of the C4 perfectly matches the exterior, so it's a really interesting design. It does lose a few points though for a lot of hard, scratchy plastic and some very hard, rubbery kind of material up here on top of the dash, but at least it looks good. Starting with the center console screen, which is set into the dashboard in a really good looking way. It's a good size screen and the graphics are nice and sharp, but the software on it is really not the best. It's quite pared back and it seems to be missing a little bit of functionality and some of the English translations on it are not quite grammatically correct. Not that I'm an English scholar, but you do notice when things aren't quite right. The native navigation system on it though is actually really good. The sound system is not fantastic. Uh, there is Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you will need a USB to use them. The vision from the reversing camera is a little bit on the small side, but there is a virtual top-down 360 degree view to help with parking, but this is such a small car, you can just do it the old-fashioned way by turning your head and using your eyes. Climate controls underneath that, pretty straightforward. You can also operate them through the center console screen if you prefer. A nice little shelf here where you would hope there would be wireless charging, but unfortunately there isn't, but we do get a USB-C and a USB-A output here. Another little storage tray down here, which is good for your wallet. And and that lifts up to reveal another little hidden cubby underneath that next to the 12 volt outlet. The lower console has a big slab of piano black on it, which has one of the most interesting gear shifter designs I've seen in a while. It's all recessed into the plastic. I actually quite like this. I think it's pretty good. We've got a push button for park and then reverse neutral drive are all on this big lever here. And you can switch to manual control and change gears using the paddle shifters on the steering wheel. If you prefer drive modes of sport, normal and eco, we've got the powered park brake here, a couple of cup holders and a quite small center console bin there with a nice soft lid. Head-up display comes up here on a uh, little bit of glass that slides up from the dashboard. It looks pretty good. And then we've got one of the most interesting looking instrument clusters I've seen on any car. It's tiny, it's only five inches and it really doesn't show very much at all. Apart from your speed, you can cycle through one or two other dial configurations, but that's pretty much it. I am a fan of the steering wheel though, with its flat top and flat bottom. This is great when you're cornering because you have a really good grip on the wheel. And uh, there's some nice controls here as well for the sound system and cruise control functions. The seats are interesting because they are quite comfortable. They use a combination of fake and real leather with this little detail strip across the middle here as well. There's power adjustment for the back and also you can lower and uh, heighten the seat with power adjustment. 
The seats are heated and there's powered lumbar support as well as a massage function. But weirdly, the one thing you cannot adjust by power is the position of the seat. You have to do that manually by sliding it backwards and forwards, which I've never seen in a car before. Why would you have power for everything else except that? One interesting little design feature that you'll find in this car in front of the front passenger is the glove box. Not that interesting in itself, but there is a little slidey out tray just on top of that. And that houses a tablet holder, which can be used for an Apple iPad or a Samsung Galaxy tablet. And this little holder here, which slides out just above that, actually attaches to the tablet holder here. So your front passenger can use a tablet here in the front seat. Genius. And the back seat of the C4 is actually pretty good. It's not bad size wise. Look, I know I'm tall. I'm 190 centimeters. This back seat is not really designed for me, but for a short trip, I would be quite comfortable. I'm uh, behind my own seating position here. I'm just touching the seat in front, but not enough to worry about. Plenty of toe room. Headroom is a bit on the low side though, but these seats are quite comfortable. Um, no center armrest. It's a bit of a shame. We do get two vents here for the air conditioning and there's one USB-C, oh sorry it's not a USB-C, it's a USB-A. One USB-A output for your kids to fight over here in the back. So for a tall person the back seat is okay for a short trip, kids be more comfortable on a longer road trip though. In terms of refinement the ride is pretty good. I mean I can't complain about the suspension or the smoothness of the ride, the steering feels good. But there is a bit of noise and it's mostly from the engine, which sounds a little bit tractor-like, which is a bit odd for a petrol car. And there's a certain coarseness to the feel of this car when the engine idles. Like when you pull up to the traffic lights as I am here, there's just a little bit of, it sort of feels like hesitation going through the cabin, like the engine's on the verge of stalling almost, which is a little bit unsettling. I mean, it's never actually happened, but should it feel that way? I don't think so. But performance from the 1.2 litre three cylinder engine is actually pretty good. I mean, it's lively. It's got everything you need for around town. I've certainly driven substantially more underpowered four cylinder cars than this one. One other small nitpick I've noticed is that the display on the digital instrument cluster and the head up display are slightly out of sync with each other, meaning that when they're displaying the speed, the correct speed actually comes up on the instrument cluster before it does on the head up display, only by a fraction of a second, but it is noticeable. Okay, let's try out this massage function. The controls for that are just down here by my right hand side. Oh, it feels quite nice. I mean, it's nothing fancy. It's not quite the full body massage you get in an Audi, but it is pulsating the lumbar support back and forth quite nicely. And yeah, that's comfortable. The C4 just isn't quite as engaging to drive as some of its rivals. I mean, Honda and Mazda really do make some of the best road cars around in terms of, you know, how fast you can go around a corner. and. Whilst the C4 isn't bad in that department, it just feels not quite as assured. We've got three modes, normal, sport and eco. I cannot really detect a difference between normal and sport. It might hang onto the gears a little bit longer, but it's pretty hard to tell the difference. Eco does dull everything down a little bit and uh, I find that just a little bit too harsh to use um, for daily driving, so I think normal is where it's at. Despite using a lot of darker materials for the seats and the dashboard and the door trims, it's pretty light and bright in here, owing mostly to this light grey ceiling liner and the uh, liner here on the A-pillars. And of course the sunroof helps too, although that is a one and a half thousand dollar option. There's really nothing fundamentally wrong with this car, it's just different and whether that's a good thing or not really just comes down to personal taste. The subcompact SUV category is one of the most competitive and no matter what your tastes are you will find a car that is right for you. But would I choose one of these over a Honda HRV or a Mazda CX-30? Probably not. The Citroen C4 does very well on price but the Honda and Mazda are just a bit easier to live with and more engaging to drive.